So today we have to talk about some drama that happened in the game between Ascend Rising and Guildex a couple days ago and how Riot handled the situation. So let's just first off give you the facts of what happened. Uh, it's currently map three between these two teams in an elimination game of the EMEA Game Changers tournament. And uh, we've got a situation where it's a post plant here for the side of uh, Ascend. They are on the attacking side. Guildex are trying to retake. They've got a Killjoy lockdown down there as well, pushing the Ascend players back. And uh, so what's going to happen is Amy here on Viper is going to do some Viper Molly lineups to try and stop the spike getting diffused. Uh, so that is exactly going to happen just here. As you can see, the uh, the mollies are going in from Amy. But what's going to happen is we just come to Anya's point of view here on the spike. She starts sticking the spike. And if you look at her health, you'll notice that it isn't going down that quickly. And the reason it's not going down that quickly is because Ness on the side of Guild X has decided to put her own Viper Molly on top of the of Ascend's Viper Molly molly and so anya is taking less damage than she would otherwise she's taking team viper molly damage and not enemy viper molly damage and so you can see she's able to stick the diffuse fast forward to the very next round and we get exactly the same situation playing out where we are in a post plant again for ascend you can see the spike is down just here and gilda trying for this retake and a viper molly has just landed on the spike to try and stop that diffuse coming in but ness again is going to put down her own viper molly to cover over the other one and uh, and create a situation where they're able to uh, get this uh, spike to half stick and then uh, ultimately are going to be able to win the round here guild and go on to uh, be 11 8 up as you can see the few starts coming in and there's nothing ascent can do now, one thing I want to point out that I think is pretty important, though, as we go forward and keep this in mind, is that Ascend were able to pull this game back and get us to overtime. Ultimately, Guildex would go on to win this map 14 to 12, but we did actually end up in overtime as Ascend were able to make this comeback uh, before ultimately falling here in overtime, as you can see. And for those of you who don't know, pro teams essentially get a big list of all the known bugs in the game and that they cannot use those bugs in game, otherwise they will be punished. Uh, but in this instance, we actually have this leaked Discord message where Angelica is asking, by the way, I'm pretty sure we're all aware of the Viper counter mollies. Are they going to be allowed to be used in the tournament? And a Riot admin is responding with, hello, I have an answer on this topic. And the answer is no, this is not allowed. So it seems pretty clear that, you know, the team should have known that this was not something that they could do. But this is not me asking for you to go and call anyone out or call someone a cheater or go to any of the guild players and say that they were cheating. Of course, they probably just made an innocent mistake. I'm sure if they would have read this properly, they would obviously never have used that because why would you if it's there so plainly speaking to you that you cannot use that. So don't go out and cause anyone any hate or call anyone a cheater or anything like that. It was obviously just a bit of a misunderstanding and they didn't really realize what was perhaps going on. So what happened in response ultimately was that we got a competitive ruling from Riot, which was during round 18 and 19 of their match on Icebox versus Ascend Rising, Guildex intentionally used an exploit which had a significant impact on the outcome of those rounds. As a result, the map was remade from round 20 with Guildex receiving a round loss for each round the exploit was used. Now, the crucial thing I want to point out here is that Guildex did receive a round loss for each of those rounds that they used the exploit, but the game ended 12-12 and went to overtime. So if you give them two round losses in those rounds, why was it replayed at round 20? And this is something I don't have the answer to, and I honestly don't know why Riot decided to make that decision, because in essence, if they're deciding that two rounds are going from one team and flipping over to the other team, and the game ended 12-12, well then Ascend essentially had 14 rounds that they won, and the impact on those rounds afterwards you know, the bug wasn't used, there was nothing wrong with those rounds that happened afterwards, so it was a bit odd that the game had to be replayed starting at round 20 rather than just being the conclusion of the game because those two rounds had flipped sides. Now on the second playthrough of the map, we would actually end up in much the same situation where both teams now, after coming from round 20 and replaying the whole thing, we'd go to overtime again. And once more, Guildex would just be able to uh, manage to win this in the first round of overtime, winning 14-12 for the second time. But we need to go back and talk about some of Riot's other decisions when it's come to situations like this. And I'm going to focus on perhaps the two most famous uh, examples of this that have happened so far in Valorant history. And we'll start with this. Ascend, funnily enough, again against Vivo Key. This was back in Champions 2021. Uh, and in this instance, what we've got here is Vivo Keyed are using a bugged cam uh, where you can see through this little gap in the wall that you're not meant to be able to see through. And, uh, you know, you could see people walking through here, you know, before they could see the cipher camera. And so it was a bug camera and wasn't allowed. 
And in that instance, we got this competitive ruling. Yesterday, we issued a competitive ruling for a map exploit by Vivo Keed and forfeited four rounds in their match against Ascent, resulting in a 13-9 victory for Ascent. After further review, we determined that they should have forfeited three rounds, which would make the score 12-10 in favor of Ascent, with no team having won the map. After discussion with Ascent, we will be replaying the match at the start of today's broadcast with Ascent ahead 7-0 to account for the six rounds that involved the exploit and one round econ penalty. Now, there are some inconsistencies here with how this was ruled to how the guild game was ruled because you can see initially they wanted to just rule four forfeited rounds meant that Ascend won the map game over, right? And it wasn't until they realized later on that actually wasn't that many rounds that we ended up with this kind of bizarre ruling where Ascend would replay the map 7-0 up. Very, very weird overall. And even looking back now after all this time, this ruling still makes no sense. And I'm sure probably most of you agree that this is just like, what is going on? Why are you 7-0 up all of a sudden? Doesn't really make much sense to me. And I'm sure to all of you as well, it seems like a bit of a weird decision. But I also want to talk about this, which of course is the uh, pretty recent kind of infamous now Killjoy turret bug that happened in the game versus FPX and Xset uh, at the most recent Champions event here a couple weeks ago, where uh, we got this shot, right? We got this perfect observer shot of this Killjoy turret bugging out, where it's going to shoot towards Angel, and then it's going to shoot towards Heaven. And ultimately, of course, this round would have to be replayed as well. And, you know, the players will get dragged back uh, in the middle of the night to come and finish this game. Uh, very, very odd. But I want to bring up with this one, because this one, of course, is a bit different. This isn't a player you know, using a bug themselves. You know, no one has any control over this Killjoy turret in this instance. So, you know, there is less blame here, you might say, overall. But I want to bring up the point that I don't think that this round would have been replayed if the Observer wasn't perfectly on this Killjoy turret to show exactly what this turret was doing, right? And I'm sure there have been countless games that have happened in Valorant between pro teams where a bug has been used by a team or something like this where it's unintentional has happened as well. You know, nothing has happened because it wasn't shown on the broadcast and so no one saw it, right? Other than the players involved themselves, no one saw it. And so things just went on as they normally went on. And that brings up a crucial, crucial point that if a team feels like, okay, as long as the observers don't see what we're doing, we might be able to get away with a bug. And then even if we do get caught with a bug, will the punishment be that harsh overall, even if we do get caught? Because for instance, Guild X you know, you could argue should have lost that game if the two rounds were being flipped to ascend instead. The game should have just been over right there and then. But actually, they got a second chance. They essentially got a second chance to go and win that game again. And so that might bring up just a little opening in the door where Riot are saying, look, if you really want to try and maybe get away with some stuff, you potentially can. So to me, when it comes to these competitive rulings for Riot, they need to be just a lot stricter. They just need to make it much more clear for everyone. We've seen a ton of different rulings on these kind of situations that, you know, none of them really seem to feel like a, a good way of dealing with it. To me, it seems much more simple to just make the whole thing very black and white. You have that big list of documents of all the known bugs in the game, or if uh, something is communicated very clearly, like it was in this instance here, in this game between Guild X and Ascend, that if you use those bugs, you just lose the map. And it doesn't matter what the score is, and it doesn't matter what happened, you just lose. And then it puts a big onus on, obviously, Riot making sure that that document that they have or their communication is very clear with the teams, and then on the teams as well to make sure that they know those things that they can and cannot use in a game. But then there is no argument, right? If that bug is in that list, you lost the map. That's the rule, right? And it would just make something very, very clear for everyone. It would, you know, undo all of these situations where we're all questioning whether think something is the right decision or, or something else should have been done instead, right? And people will draw their lines based on, you know, which team they prefer or whatever, right? That would all be gone because we would have simple, clear rulings. And I think everyone would be okay with that, right? That, sure, if you used a bug and you maybe even didn't know, like in this instance where Gildex, you know, didn't know that, you know, they weren't allowed to use it or whatever. Well, that doesn't matter because the onus is now on you. You're going to lose the map no matter what. And I think that that would be just a better solution for everyone involved because it's so much clearer than the rules kind of currently are.